Mojo Workshop. My name is Rob Montgomery, the host, and I have been in touch with our next speakers, one of which is experiencing some technical difficulties. Kim Fox, who was uh, working, get this, folks, at the pyramids just hours ago, has come across uh, 6 October Bridge to her flat in Cairo, and she's experiencing some data problems. But we will try to bring her on if she can, even if it's just audio. If we can't bring Kim, who is a professor of practice at American University in Cairo, um, she teaches audio production, podcasting, so she's used to just the sound of her voice uh, and other media-related courses. Um, both she and her students have won numerous international awards for their audio work over the past few years, and we're really hoping that Kim can join us. So, Jim, Kim, I can see your avatar there. So if you are able to um, pop on with uh, to turn your mic on and join us, it would be great. The, the plan B for this, and for those of you doing mobile journals at home with your studio, is I have a mixer here. Oh, there's Neil. Neil's going to come on, and I'm going to tell you what's going on. And Neil, we're going to switch over to Neil, and we're going to try and bring Kim in through a phone into my mixing board. Who knows if it works? But Neil Augens, Augenstein, and now I have to say it the American way. Uh, is a reporter with WTOP, the all-news radio station in Washington, D.C. In 2010, he became the first major market radio reporter in the U.S. to do all of his field reporting with just an iPhone. And that iPhone went to the museum. Is that right? It, it did. It did, as a matter of fact. Welcome to the uh, program. Uh, and thanks for rolling with. And this never happens in radio, right? Uh, well, th that's the that's one of the things about uh, about mobile journalism, Rob, as you know, <laughs> is that you need to always be thinking ahead. Uh, you can't just have plan A. You've got to have plan B and plan C because yeah. chances are uh, there's not you know, there's there's going to be some technical glitches. Uh, and, you know, as you know, as a, as a radio reporter, um, there, there's constant deadlines and sometimes you're in buildings, sometimes you're in the newsroom, sometimes you're out in the mountains and you can't really know what sort of signal or data you're going to have uh, available. So you really do need to constantly be considering, OK, here's the best quality if I use plan A. If that doesn't work, I'll shift to plan B and okay. if necessary, I'll go to plan C. And I think we're at plan C now. Well, or are we at plan A? Because Kim says she's back. Kim, are you there? Can you give us a mic check? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you all well. Can you hear me? Okay, we'll, we'll turn our cameras off and we'll take you as long as we can. And we know what plan B is, thanks to Mr. Augenstein. Oh, I said it in German. Sorry. <laughs> all right. My apology. Where are we in this presentation? Is it just me starting off the ball and rolling? Absolutely. I've already introduced you. Uh, everyone knows you're a rock star and that you were just at the pyramids. <laughs> right. We had breakfast at the pyramids, you know, like forget about your breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, but, yeah. you know, and I use my mobile phone quite a bit. I didn't do any video. Uh, we did a little bit of audio and obviously took a lot of pictures. So so that's my sort of practical use of the mobile device today. But I don't want to step all over Neil, and I think we're pretty much going to go back and forth on this, and I prefer that kind of dialogue. Uh, so, Neil, feel free to jump in as I sort of present the tips, and maybe you can help out with some of the practical end and how you're actually putting these into practice. Um, or we can just, you know, try to, to build out a little bit differently. But I'll, I'll uh, tips for using the mobile device as you're recording your narration. And... You know, if you don't have a studio, like I think Neil can go in the studio and drop some things at the radio station, but perhaps you don't have anything fancy like that. So what a lot of people have done during COVID is to try to build something like an in-home studio with what you have. Uh, that makes it really different from what the professionals have. And journalists who travel often find themselves in hotel rooms to record their narration. And so they'll take the pillows and the couch cushions and, and you know, kind of MacGyver a situation where you have a, a bit of a lower ceiling. A lot of people are using their home closets. So those are great places to record your narration. 
but when we're talking about you actually using it for recording your mobile device, then you want to, I had a presentation, but I'm afraid to, to bring it up now that I'm having some, some issues over here. Yeah. But, yeah. It's too much data for the pyramids, apparently. Um, <laughs> so when you're recording on your mobile device, you want to first like think about your planning and be organized. What kind of phone do you have? What kind of, not only the, the brand, like is it an Android, is it an iPhone, but what model is it is also gonna be something important. And, you know, and what capacity does it have to, to record audio files and retain them? Uh, so if you're not able to, if you don't have enough space on your device, that's gonna be a problem. And I'm sure we, uh, Rob, you all often talk about having the batteries and the, uh, the storage that you can car carry around with you. Those things are really important. Uh, Neil, do you want to add something to that about, you know, using the mobile de device for narration? Well, um, uh, of course, Kim, those, those are all very good points. There there were some built-in uh, apps uh, in an iPhone. I use an iPhone, so that's my my area of expertise. There are some some apps you can use to uh, to record digital digital quality. And, of course, most of us are familiar with Voice Memo, which, uh, which is a uh, the, the basic recording uh, uh, app uh, that's built into to all iPhones these days, and also uh, iPads, and you can record digital digital quality uh, right on the phone. Uh, not what's great about it is that not only can you do it your your own voice, but these days, uh, a, a lot of my effort is in convincing the person who I would normally just do a phone interview with. I will help them learn how to use voice memo on their phone so that they will sound digital quality in my reports. I actually send them a little how-to video um, that, that walks them through how to do that uh, because trying to explain that can be a little uh, a little nerve-wracking, especially for the person on the other end who is uh, who, who may be saying, but well, well, this is radio. We've always just done an interview over the radio. Uh, obviously, we want to uh, step things up a bit and digital quality is better. Um, so in addition to, to voice memo for the basic recording of your voice, there's also a great free um, uh, if you'd like to use the basic model, multi-track audio editing app that I use called Ferrite, F-E-R-R-I-T-E. -E, and I think its official name is Ferrite Studio. And uh, you can go in there and do uh, multi-track audio editing. You, you interview somebody, you pull sound bites, you write your own script, you edit the sound bites, you edit in your voice part, and you can send that to the newsroom. And that's what I've done in the field since Ferrite was invented. So since 2010, I think, uh, that's when I stopped using a, a laptop in the field. And, have, and having the ability to do these, these intricate uh, voice wraps in the field has really freed me up to go ahead and do uh, you know all the work that I normally would have to travel back to the newsroom to uh, to produce. Now I can do it all out in the field and uh, and transmit it and uh, get on to the next story. Wow, I like that, Neil. I do have a question for you about Ferrite. Uh, I had been using it a little bit here and there, and I, I wasn't particularly. Uh, a, a fan of using it on the actual iPhone because lack of the display, uh, the, you know, just a small screen basically, but I did really enjoy using it on my iPad. So what are your thoughts or do you have any tips and tricks for, for using it on the, the smaller iPhone? Well, I, I actually do uh, prefer doing the editing on my iPhone rather than my iPad. Those are the two devices that I carry. I usually just use my iPad for, uh, for writing my scripts and eventually writing my, my web story because reporters these days are expected to write uh, their web story in addition to, uh, to doing their, their radio piece. I actually find that for the basic, uh, basic raps, as, as we call them at WTOP, which is me talking, 
uh, adding in a sound bite from from uh, the newsmaker, me talking again, uh, a second sound bite from the uh, from the newsmaker, and me doing my final line, uh, which is about 35 to 40 seconds. I find that that doing it on the iPhone is easier than transferring it to uh, to the iPad to edit. Now, it, 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 uh, Apple has made things a lot easier to transfer uh, with uh, with AirDrop, and so it is easy. If I were doing a more advanced production, um, I would transfer the audio from my phone to my uh, to my iPad to do the multi-track editing. But of course, the reason why we started doing uh, mobile journalism and audio editing in the field is to avoid having to transfer from one device to the other. So, uh, you know, I, I, I personally find it easier to edit it on the, the small phone. And yes, there are times when I hit the wrong uh, when, when I hit you know, the wrong part of the phone and it sends me where I don't want to go. But thankfully, uh, it doesn't delete the, the material when I do that. It's just a matter of uh, zooming in a little bit and, uh, and getting the edit done. Yeah, thanks for sharing that insight. I knew you'd be providing that practical use uh, advice for us today, <laughs> so thank you. I, and also, I, I had a comment here about using the mobile device for tape sync like interviews, which you already mentioned. And of course, you're wise enough to say, I do this enough that you record the video. But for those who, you know, haven't seen the video or probably let's kind of walk them through some of those steps uh, or tips that we can share with them on how to get their ease comfortable when you're trying to get them to record themselves. Right. Absolutely. Take it away and I'll, I'll jump in as. Uh, as we yeah. Talk. Right. Again, it goes back to where are you? Uh, where, where where are they in their home or you know maybe they're in their office so we want you want to consider uh, where they're going to be recording their voice uh, and and much like what we do in radio is trying to reduce some if, if we were face to face trying to reduce some of those uh, extraneous noises that might exist you know from an air conditioner for example uh, we can't do much about the barking dog as Neil <laughs> had an example with his dog barking you get the baby crying these things you can't control but sometimes you can get them to put their mobile device on on um, do not disturb, for example, so that the calls don't come in and notifications don't come in. And uh, just trying to maybe ask them, you know, like, what room are they in? Uh, maybe they can go to a smaller room. Yeah. You yeah. The, uh, the, I find that, that the that the placement of the microphone is very important. I'm holding up my, my the bottom of my iPhone right now and directly to the left of the charging port is the microphone. So I uh, instruct people to hold the bottom of the phone six to eight inches from their mouth, which is what I'm doing right now. Right now. So when I voice my, my pieces, I'm holding it six to eight inches from my mouth. Now there, there are challenges, uh, you know, what you're, you're mentioning uh, in the room. Sometimes uh, I actually have a, 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 a towel that I keep right here that I, I put on my, uh, on my desk uh, to to keep the sound from from bouncing, uh, or I'll get close to a to a pillow. The idea being that you build as tight a um, uh, an area as possible with a, with as little. The problem is when you're in a big expansive empty room, the sound bounces off walls and it. Bounce, you know, and then it comes back to your to your microphone. That's when you get that hollow sound, which which is what separates good quality iPhone audio from every you know from everything else. So you really do want to get as tight uh, a situation as possible. So that that may mean uh, putting your iPhone right against a pillow or uh, taking the the uh, taking the the um, the pillows off a couch and just putting your phone right by right in the uh, the crevice of the uh, of the couch and putting your script on the couch and and leaning in and reading um, your script that way so getting as as uh, you know as tight a, a sound as, as possible without uh, sound bouncing is really the goal. Uh, if you're if you're using a home studio, there's uh, there's something called a, a, an acoustic baffle 
uh, that that you can use on your uh, on your uh, larger phone. I, I got mine from Amazon, and it makes a it makes a, a big difference. Um, the, one important thing to remember with uh, w when when you're asking somebody to do a a voice memo interview is that they can't do a voice memo interview while they're on a phone call. So you've got, to, so he, uh, you, there's a couple of different things that, that can be done. A, if the person has a landline, you can make the call and hear each other's questions and answers and then have them use their the voice memo just as a recording device. You can, you can chat with them uh, in Messenger or uh you know or or zoom uh and uh so that they can hear so you can hear the back and forth but then just record the the quality uh in the bottom of the iphone in, in voice memo uh, one thing that one thing that i don't i think most people don't realize and it's i think it's a pretty uh good thing to remember is that the re that recording audio in voice memo is going to sound better than recording it on Zoom, and here's why. Mm. Zoom, as you know, is a cloud-based, web-based audio, whereas voice memo is essentially recording on the hard drive of your phone. So it, it, it doesn't take into consideration uh, the, the, the data connection that you have. So the, so the audio that you, that you re record in the voice memo of your iPhone is essentially hard drive. And as you know, that's going to be better sound quality than if you have a, uh, if, you, if you chat uh, through Zoom. I want to build on that a little bit, Neil, if you don't mind. And when I say build on it, I want to say, I, I like Zoom for some of the reasons that you just mentioned in terms of being able to see the person. So not necessarily being trying to be dependent on that audio, but then taking those tips and steps that you just walked us through of using that, you know, having them record with their mobile device and you're going to get that better quality audio that, that, that they can then just email to you. So it's like they're listening, you're having the conversation, but they're also using that mobile device to record the conversation uh, and mostly record themselves, which is really key. The other thing I want to add, uh, Neil, is um, actually two things. One, if you're outdoors. So if you're actually in the field field, you're not at home. Um, some of these practices we, we want to uh, in place are what's the priority of the phone as you're recording in the field. So obviously trying to stay away from really noisy backgrounds uh, is one thing that you want to try to avoid. And just trying to uh, just, just paying attention to what you're doing and being organized in that way. If you can manage to have your script available when you're doing that, uh, or if you're just trying to catch some of that NAT sound, what we call that B-roll in, in audio, that NAT sound, uh, that's also going to be important for you to gather while you're out in the field. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is the, the iPhone headphones that a lot of people have because it comes with the phone. That microphone is pretty decent, so you, you don't want to just toss that out. However, if you decide to use it, if you're if you have one of the iPhones that has the connection with the headphones, then you know you know that that microphone and the headphones will override the mic and the phone. So that's something that's really important. Uh, it's good for you and your narration, but it's not good for you if you're trying to do an interview in the field with that same uh, ear. You having one earbud in your ear, for example, and then trying to take the mic back and forth. That's pretty messy. So you want to try to avoid that scenario. What are your thoughts? So in a pinch, I guess that's what you do, Neil, right? But yep, ideally, yep. it's not the best setup. Yeah. And and, and one and maybe the the to me the most important and also the most inexpensive um, uh, accessory for an iPhone reporter is to have several windscreens. And I'm not talking about windscreens that are built specifically for an iPhone. I'm talking about the kind that you would buy at any uh, at any music store. You can find them online at, at Amazon for uh, you know for four or five dollars. These are the windscreens that would fit over the ball of a microphone. You know when you go to see a concert and the and the microphone has a has a ball that's about uh, about this big. 
uh, at the top. What you what you do is you buy a uh, a standard uh, windscreen that's made of foam, and you just slide it over. It has a hole that's about this big and it's stretchy. So you just slide it down over the iPhone, over the bottom of the iPhone where the microphone is, and that protects the wind. Well, as good as um, as an iPhone's built-in microphone is, it's incredibly, incredibly susceptible to wind noise. And unlike an analog microphone, which will uh, will sometimes allow you to to uh, to record wind. Uh, and, and and have the person know that it is wind. With an iPhone, it will cause a, a, a sort of distortion that will make the audio completely unusable. So buying uh, and having several of these, uh, what, as Rob is modeling right there, Rob's is, uh, I believe that uh, uh, on your side of the ocean, are they, are they called furry cats or something like that, uh, Rob? The dead cat? I hope not. Dead cat, right, 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 right. Right. Um, but uh, but over you're, here, you're we, muted, yeah, over here, we're, uh, we just call them windscreens. Uh, and, and that is what I've used to cover, uh, to cover hurricanes, where there's obviously a lot of, uh, a lot of, exactly what Rob is having right there. That, uh, you just slide that right over. And it's really made for the zoom. So if you're looking yeah. for one Luftschutz, wind protector to to work for maybe you've got your good zoom with you or if you're like neil you just put it on there there you go and yep. it's really windproof this one this and one's not give, two or three dollars though this one's a little more expensive let me give you your plan b's okay uh when you when you even though you've got uh even though i, I make sure that i have um uh the, the four dollar windscreen in my uh, in my uh, car uh at home in my go kit, there are times when I forget it. So here's here's your backups. You can use a sock, uh, if you don't mind taking off your sock and putting it on uh, on your your phone. Uh, hopefully, you won't have to do an interview with somebody else, but uh, but you could use it that way. And uh, my favorite backup was uh, when I was at Starbucks, um, and I I realized I'd forgotten my my windscreens. If you fold over a napkin twice, so it's two thi two two um, two thicknesses, and you just hold it tight over the, the you just bend it and hold it over the bottom of the iPhone, as Rob is doing right there, uh, it will um, it will muffle the sound. Uh, it it uh, won't muffle the sound. It will block the wind noise. Exactly what Rob is doing right there, and that is your plan B. Uh, your plan B workaround. I love it. You got to be ready and and jump right in. Use what you got. Yeah, exactly. So thanks for that tip, Neil. It's a really good one. Sure. We briefly mentioned recording apps, and so I want to loop back to that. And I really like to use my voice memo application in the iPhone, and I'm assuming there's something similar in Android. And you mentioned Ferrite. I used to use Voice Record Pro, and I haven't used it in a while, but I liked it because it had many options for using or recording the, the actual file. Do you want a WAV file? Do you want an MP3? Do you want the M4A? You could record at different sample rates. Uh, so that's some, you know, for a free app, that's a lot of a variety. Let's if just I can say. jump in on, on that one for one second, Kim, what's what's real? What I really like uh, a voice record pro for is, uh, as you know, it's easier to share a video file and video uh, on social media and video files traditionally do better uh, when they're being shared than audio files. What you can do with um, with uh, voice record pro is that if you have uh let's say a, a 30 second uh voice report or rap you can upload you can upload a photo that you took of the event and you can press save as save to camera roll and it will uh make that into a video 
and that and having a video on your camera roll that you can tweet with good quality audio uh, is something that that we used to have to do uh, you know a, a six or seven workarounds to get to but having that you you can now you can easily tweet something that people are likely to share yeah and, and and instagram too putting that onto your instagram feed or your stories is also going to get some traction uh, for those audiences so that's a very good tip to share appreciate you jumping in with that one neil and the last app i wanted to speak and one that I haven't used in years, so I'm not familiar with the updates since they were acquired by Spotify, is Anchor. Uh, Neil and I are giving you lots and lots of tips on, uh, you know, how to do these setups. But some people will say, you know, just open up that Anchor app and go for it and start to record your podcast. And sort of a one-stop shop is what you're going to get with the Anchor app. And I do know a couple of people who have, you know, don't have the savvy of doing all the technical things that are involved with some of the things that we're sharing with you, or they just don't want the hassle and would prefer to go a route like a, a, an anchor where you can, you know, add a little bit of audio, uh, add a little bit of music if that's what you desire to your podcast. For example, a music bed at the beginning and, and the end, and also having to do that distribution part for you. Uh, that's also less of a hassle if you're going through something like an anchor. Uh, there have been some other issues people have reported. Again, this is not my firsthand experience, but you know there has always been concern about the uh, who owns your show or getting your show sort of cloned uh, via anchor. So those are just some cautions. Again, I haven't investigated those or, or vetted those claims but those are things that I've read about and heard about from others. So I don't know if Rob or if Neil want to jump in and, and share their anchor experience, or perhaps if some, someone in the audience has an experience to share, we can have you all jump in shortly with that. He was just low. I think. That's one of the things is like, I started and stopped podcasting in about 2006. Um, so that's why you guys are here. <laughs> I really don't. Right. I, I don't. I, you know, I've got it on there. I just like it's on my to do list, but somehow. It's, yeah, it's on my phone and I just don't use it. Yeah. Yeah. More like that. I haven't, uh, I haven't used, um, I haven't used Anchor uh, very much. I find, and, and probably the reason is that if we're talking in general terms about podcasts, I, I am very reluctant to suggest that people just do a podcast because if a podcast isn't interesting, I'm going to turn it off in the first 30 seconds. Uh, it, it really is. I, I don't think you should do a podcast unless you have something to, to say and something that would that would be interesting. It's not interesting to hear a couple of guys do inside jokes. Uh, for you know, for a long period of time. Um, also, I find as a radio guy that I want my audio to be well edited generally, um, mm -hmm. and, and and I think the 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 while the hit you know just hit start part of of uh, of anchor is great and i assume that there that there's some trimming that you can do here and there i would rather produce uh an audio piece and uh and and share it. and that may just be my my radio training because uh, for a for an all news radio station you have 40 seconds to tell to tell a story so you have uh you know so every every word counts uh and shifting to uh to uh, to sort of a rambling type thing uh is something that has taken me a while to really be interested in uh rob what do you have uh, up there on your, well, uh, on your it looks familiar right it's a multi-track editor okay so why go to an why to go to another tool if i'm already teaching you or if i already know how to use luma fusion it's got six tracks of video that's mainly what we do but we also can mix six tracks of audio and the latest version supports audio plugins. So if I need to drop a compressor on it or a limiter to you know get that or EQ it, 
I can do that with plugs that I've already got. Um, you know, and I'm still editing from mobile. I'm just, instead of another app, I'm, it's not even plan right. B, it's plan A. It's like, this is a tool I already know how to use. I just don't need video. So I'll just put a still image on there and I'll mix to my heart's content down here uh, in the audio region. And I can go into any of those tracks and I can do ducking. I can do keyframe animation to bring up the levels. You know, if I've got ISO tracks of me and my, it's just quicker, you know? Um, Absolutely. Like you, that's, that's production cool. values are super important for podcasts. You know, this was the thing when I was doing it, you know, you don't see it. It's off mic, but I've got a proper mic here. I've got sound. I've got curtains hanging here. I've got a lot of audio treatment here um, because I know it's an intimate experience. People are in their cars. They're in their, I mean, their earbuds, you know, and it's a really intimate thing. So you can't have sloppy audio. And but this this app can do it. You know, LumaFusion, no problem. It's it's, it's just already there. Yeah, I think that's that's good to to know. And it's great that we're sharing some options with people in terms of, you know, what are you familiar with? You know, if you're familiar with Zoom, go with that. If you're familiar with LumaFusion, uh, if Anchor's your thing, then that's your thing. So at least there is some there are lots of options for people to take advantage of for for their workflow and whatever they're working with. The last point I have on my list is organizing your audio file. This is something that is just, you know, Neil and I both work in, in radio, audio and whatnot. It's like, this is 101. You know, you're recording files, especially as voice memos. Make sure you get in there and also label those files so that you know what it is. I think the default for Apple is to give it a date and a time. And, you know, if you're doing things back to back, it could get a little. So ideally, uh, I try to create a system. And if you're using something like Ferrite, I think you also are able to have some folders, which is going to be really helpful to organize your projects. So you want to elaborate on that a little bit, Neil, in your experience? Um, well, I think that uh, that organization has never been my my strong <laughs> point. I, I'm, you know, I, I throw out notebooks when I'm done with them. Uh, my my note taking is, is often a piece of paper which is in the back of my jeans, which I find, uh, you know, after I take my jeans out of uh, out of the, the, the dryer. washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> so so I am not, I am not the the the, the expert uh, on file keeping and keeping things for for later. I I find that uh, that a photo that. I you that I take you know let's say I take let's say I take 15 photos of a, of a news event and I tweet uh, three of them. Um, I I sort of feel like after I tweet them, those are always going to be my three best photos. So why do I want to save all of the photos again? I can go back to to Twitter and and retrieve the, those best photos. Later, I want. I I prefer to to keep my phone free of files, uh, keep it moving as 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 fast as it as it can, um, with as much space. So I actually delete things. I, I, you know, I, I, maybe you know, maybe someday it'll come back and, and bite me. But uh, but I've never been burned by, you know what? I deleted that file and uh, and I really needed it now i think if i if i need it if i need it at the moment it's important and and i and, and if i share it online i've got a you know i've got a way to go back and research it right and i think for your workflow that's great i mean if you're working on say with a documentary or something that's a little bit more long form uh, again my my suggestion for naming the files is so that when i airdrop them to my computer they're just not some random files. I still know like, what was that? What See, interview was that? When, yeah. There's a reason why, why Kim is a, is a, is a, a qualified professor because she thinks that way and she, she understands the importance of it. And I, I totally defer to her on, uh, for her expertise right. on, uh, on that. I, I want to share one, one other, uh, one other tip. And I will, uh, after I'm done talking about it, I will, uh, I will include the link in the general chat. By the way, I, I, I included the uh, the YouTube video uh, in the general chat that I sent to people, which walks them through how to do the the voice memo 
set up uh, and feel free to, to send that to somebody. And by, by the way, I find that telling them in the very first time that you touch base with them, that you want to do an interview, the expectation that they will provide digital audio is very important. Don't bother going through the whole thing of, of getting them to agree to the interview and then spring the, the thing about the digital audio, because I, I guarantee nine out of 10 times they're gonna say, oh, I can't do that, I, I, I can't, uh, I don't have the time. So if you, right. if you tell them from the very beginning that this is the expectation, we wanna be able to, to, to hear you very well, and I'm going to I'm going to help you. I'm going to walk you through the, the tech. If you send them some video that they can digest for a few minutes, that empowers them a lot. And uh, and they'll be more likely to do that. Uh, the the one other um, the one other app that I wanted to, to share in terms of uh, of doing interviews um, is uh, WhatsApp uh, and in particular WhatsApp chat. What what is great about the, a lot of a lot of people use WhatsApp and they make they make uh, what well, you make free phone calls right is that is that is that what the, the benefit of it some is some of it yes you can do the chat you can do it all in one app yes right but with but with what with WhatsApp with WhatsApp in the chat mode I can ask a question of Kim uh, either by print you know by by text or by audio. And she can speak, she can respond. When I ask the question, it dings on her phone. She knows that I asked a question. She can look at the question. She can answer it. She can hold the bottom of her phone up to her mouth, press one button, and, um, and, the, um, and she sends digital quality audio to me. Again, that's, and that is equivalent to voice memo. That is not just uh the 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 web quality the the zoom quality again this is the better quality audio that that we that we're just trading back and forth uh, one thing that's nice about that is that you don't have to coordinate you don't really have to coordinate a time to do an interview i can um i can say to somebody look i'm going to send you uh some questions i'm going to send you a question on um on whatsapp chat when you you know, I know you're driving. When you get to, when you get there, please answer your answer the question with, uh, in the chat. Um, but when that person just presses the the, the button, it go the audio is transmitted directly to me. I get a ding knowing that it's there. I can download that audio, and I've got studio quality audio on my phone that I can share uh, and I can use in my uh, in my audio report. That's um, brilliant. So, I had a lot of success with that during COVID with my students. And, you know, a lot of them couldn't get to do face-to-face -face interviews and we had time differences and, and this was the perfect solution. So, it yeah. Is, yeah, it is, uh, it is a great, to, to me, it is, is great. It is going to be, there. If, if you're, you know, if you try to tell somebody who was over my age or my <laughs> age, uh, they might have a difficult time uh, understanding it. Um, so I'm, what I'm gonna the, uh, the the video that I'm gonna post uh, shortly in the in the chat that you can send that to them. And of course, if you asked uh, a, a ten year old how to do it, they would be able to explain it to you uh, perfectly. But uh, what I just posted right now, that's the uh, that's the the how to on using the uh, What's WhatsApp to record interviews? Yeah, and like Rob said, those are really nice and quick sound bites. Uh, the only thing that you that I'll say is that they do come across as M4A files. That's not a big deal. It's just it is, it is what it is. You can convert it to something else when you get to that point if you need to off of the mobile. M4A is perfectly fine for what we're what we're talking about, especially from field work and using your mobile device. Good point. Yeah, it would be interesting to so see just, you drop just, those I'm sorry, onto Rob, you Lumicution. Jump in? Yeah, I, I'm just saying it'd be interesting. I could do a test with that, just drop it onto the LumaFusion timeline to see if it if it takes it. I'm, I mean, that's the cool thing about a video editor. They tend to eat just about every format of media out there. It's uh, 
anyways, I'll do that and I'll get back. Yeah, to you can you can definitely import it into Adobe Audition if you're taking your files from your phone to a desktop for editing or something like that. So the the M4A does not complicate anything, and it really is. It makes the file smaller and, and more uh, portable. Uh, and taking up less space on your phone for sure. So that's great news. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I highly recommend it because it, it is an easy way to do uh, an interview, especially if timing is a problem. So just to sort of recap some of the things that we've talked about and share with you all, we talked about using your mobile device for your narration. Uh, of course, talking about tape sync like interviews, uh, how to say what's set up on a phone call or a Zoom, but then you're going to have your interviewee record using their mobile device. And then, you know, the process of coaching them through that process. What space are they in? What kind of mobile device do they have? And we talked about different apps for recording on your mobile that are really useful and, and helpful for you. And finally, talked a little bit about organizing your audio files and uh, just getting things in a way that you can have a plan to execute. So I think now's a good time to open it up for questions to see what you all have to to ask us. Hey, can I be first? Yes, you go ahead, Rob. I I've got my WhatsApp here. And so like this is what we're talking about, right? You see my buddy sends me a, a soundbite, uh, you know, a reply. Are you, uh, uh, first of all, first question is, are you asking your questions in, in glyphs with text or are you doing it with the sound of your voice? Because that probably has a difference to maybe how the interview goes or have you found a difference? Well, you can do it. You can do do it either way. You have the flexibility. Some uh, if you if you were listening to it, you would need to spend the time to listen to the answer before you ask the next question. If you send if you're sending it by text, then uh, then then you can keep working, or maybe you're listening to one while you're tech while you're typing the next one. That can help. Uh, Sure. Uh, pick up, pick up the the, the pace, um, but uh, so it, you know, there's not one way. Uh, okay. There's not one sure. way that fits all. Mm -hmm. Right, because not every interview is the same either. And second, how do you get the file out of here? If I long press on it, yep. All I can do is star reply forward or delete. So I'm yeah. stuck. Excellent question, Robin. I, I sort of feel like you're like you're just uh, like you're like you're playing the straight man for me. Um, I'm, I'm teeing you, you up, man, because really, yeah, you, I I love did. this idea. Okay. I haven't, I I didn't, I have never done it. So I'm totally okay. Well, here's it. what you do, Rob. So so hold the picture of the person who you're talking with. Yeah. Hold the picture. Long and press. You will, okay. Right, and then you get the options to reply, forward, or delete. Press forward. Oh, okay. press the picture. Whoops. There he is. Right. Press forward. Um, then you um, then you uh, uh, click on you. You choose. You get a, uh, the option to to choose the sound bite that you want to to. Right. Okay. The blue check mark. You can right. you could do multiple. And then oh, right. Okay. And then uh, well, actually, actually, uh, I think that you can only do one at a time. So you okay. you press the 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 you check it. Then in the bottom left, the share arrow, press that. The share the box with the up arrow. There we are. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. That's not the one. Uh, no. Right. It's the box with the, the box with the, uh, with the up arrow, Pre uh, press the, the, the box with the up arrow. And then that will give you different apps that yes. you can open it in. See, so I press that and now it, it lets me open it up right in ferrite. So I could do the interview with somebody, and if I were in the field, I could just open up that file right in Ferrite. Or LumaFusion. I just bounced it to LumaFusion. Luma so there's the answer. There's the full. There's the full Monty. Right. So you don't even have to to transfer it from one device to another. So the, you know this is the this is the gold standard when you can do it all on uh, on on one device. Exactly. And even the, and then you can follow up with Kim's tip because that file came over, like you said, Kim. It's it's all time date stamped. That's the default mm -hmm. naming convention for, <laughs> right. that every developer uses. 
um, because you know they like to talk about AI, but it doesn't really help. Uh, it doesn't automate anything. So log and capture, that's what we teach it as video um, to organize so you know what's in each sound bite. So I would say that sound bite, I would wanna say who it is, what's the first three words of the sound bite and the last three words, and then I can find it if I've got a lot of bites to organize. But and I want to. I, I want to. You can rename wanna... that in. You can rename that in LumaFusion. So as as it comes over as in the developer nomenclature, you can rename it here. So as you start to work with it, and then when it gets forwarded, on it always comes over with the proper reporter annotation on it. Yeah. And let so me, if you're, let working, me share... if you're passing it on to an editor, for example, if you're yeah. not doing everything yourself. Yeah. If you're uh, and while we're talking about uh, about uh, uh, passing it on to an editor. Um, this is, we have at, at WTOP, we've found a, what I think is a, and I, this was, this is an example of the way synergy works. I told my bosses about, uh, how I was able to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with, uh, with, with WhatsApp. They liked that idea, but they, but they took it to the next step. So now we've got a, you're able to set up a, a chat where you've got several different people in the chat, all able to, to communicate, to trade audio. So in cases, for instance, we're, we're in the nation's capital. We're often covering um, protests where we've got three or four reporters out in the field at a certain time. We've got the desk trying to monitor uh, what's going on. Uh, we've got the, the web team looking in and, and listening to what's happening and reading and seeing photos and, and using that information. So if everybody gets on the same chat, then you, then you can, then everybody can keep track of what's going on. So if, if let's say I'm in the field and I'm at a protest and I, um, and I, stumble upon some uh, some great um, audio. I will record that. I'll do a roser of myself talking with uh, with the, the, the chanters behind me and I'll just hit the, the the go button and it will transmit to everybody in the chat. So everybody knows at once what I have witnessed. So, the web person can take that information and put it into the web story. The 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 uh, the editor who's booking the next hour knows what it is that I've stumbled upon, and they will uh, and they can start building that into their hour. Uh, someone yeah. else may be pulling sound bites, so it really is uh, a way to to magnify so in while well at so first you're talking about just having a, a whatsapp group then i guess is what right, you're saying right. if so, you have a whatsapp so, right, group then so, now you can do a lot more as a group. yeah so you're so sharing rather, audio rather than, rather than one to one we're talking about one to many which right, right. is which is uh something that uh that is professor neil is here, here. <laughs> exactly that also goes into the category of cya um yeah. because yes. now well, I mean, because seriously, if your phone gets uh, damaged by a protester, stolen by a protester, taken by the police, your reporting is in the newsroom or it's in someone yeah, else's hands. It yeah, it's protected. I do want to address this one question in the chat. What do, what to do if oh, the yeah. answers get long or short? You know, that's very important. I mean, that's sometimes right. you can try to tell your interviewee like, hey, can you give me a two, three minute, you know, kind of response? Uh, some people naturally tend to be uh, long winded. I don't know if Neil has any other tips for, you know, you, you're not in front of them, so they can't rap sign or anything like that. So what yeah, do you do, Neil? Um, well, you know, the good thing about being a, a radio reporter is that you're able that you're able to choose, pick and choose what it is that you want to use. So if they, yeah. if they talk for, for, for four minutes and uh, you, you want to use four seconds of audio, you're the journalist. You get to, to choose the the, the, the soundbite and you can... You can import that into uh, into ferrite and uh, trim that uh, that uh, four minute interview into four seconds of the of the soundbite that you want. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, the, the the person will 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 get the uh, will eventually get into the rhythm. So if you if you send some questions back and forth, they'll they'll understand what it is that you're yeah. Uh, 
you're looking and a for. good reporter will restate the question a different way and so yeah you'll eventually get the thing that you want maybe in fewer words so that's a very and, so, and, and sometimes what i'll do is i'll, I'll say um i i know I, yeah i'm familiar with all the background so just so just tell me your your reaction <laughs> and uh that, that's that's a nice way of, that's a nice way of saying uh you know yeah, jump, to, jump to the yeah. sound bite please yeah, you're right, Neil. I like that. Um, Barbara was asking about the compression in WhatsApp. We briefly mentioned that a little bit earlier about the M4A. That's the compression that we're dealing with. And it's the same as if you were using your voice memos, which is also an M4A file. Uh, it's totally sufficient for, for what we're doing, especially if you're trying to get something to the newsroom and get something on the air right away. Uh, it's not something that the listener can hear. The, the, the phrase that I prefer to use is it's good enough for radio. And, you know, we, we have some some people who, uh, you know, God bless them. There are some real artists, some people who, who can 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 make a story breathe. They can get so close to something that you can hear it in a certain way. But on the radio, certainly on a, on a news station, if you can hear it clearly, that's good enough. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I, I, I would never say use bad audio. Uh, I, you know, that's what that, you know, and, and in many cases, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, if you listen to a lot of radio stations, even networks, they're, they're cell phone quality audio. I, I always tell people, put down the phone. I don't want to talk with you on the phone. I would like you to, to, to trade this audio, this digital quality audio with me. But that that digital quality audio, whether it be M4A or Wave, uh, that is good enough for radio, and that's going to sound right. better than ninety percent of the sound bites that are uh, on the air. Right. One more thing that I think we didn't cover, Neil, and it's not necessarily related to to the recording on the mobile device. Are you doing any transcribing of your sound bites? Uh, that's something that, again, for longer form audio pieces, we would, uh, but I'm, sometimes you do that in your radio script too. So tell me about that process for you. Sure. Well, uh, I'm not sure whether uh, whether you've been using Otter, O-T-T-E-R, um, which is, which is re it, it really is amazing in the last year or two, how much better uh, the auto to text transcribing has become but uh right but so kim uh has just put it here auto otter dot ai for transcribing um so you can do that on your phone you can download uh you you can um you can transcribe uh, uh using sound bites that are that you recorded on your phone uh, it, or you, if you're at a desktop, you can you can uh, do it that way. But I find that that is that is is actually part of my workflow is transcribing, and that and here's why: um, radio reporters and I think TV reporters, uh, it it always sounds better if you write around your sound. In other words, know what your what the words are in your sound bite and fit your script around that rather than vice versa. Don't write your script and try to fit in sound bites. That never sounds as good. So if you if you know what the sound if you know what the uh, the sound bites say, you can tweak easily your script to make it flow well. And Otter is really helpful uh, for that. There are several different apps now, actually, that that are doing auto um, uh, auto transcribing. Uh, Rob mm -hmm. probably is is familiar with uh, with some of the some of those uh, because you know putting putting captions on video is is becoming a a, a big deal. Well, yeah. That, so and this is like the, what you were talking about is like the most time consuming labor intensive thing that still and and otter is great otter is great you all so i still I, what i would love what i told the developers i'm a beta tester for luma fusion i said look text to audio is, is a commodity now it's so cheap it's so good like you said and it's widely available why can't we just process an interview clip just the audio track and give us give us that and create that subtitle and then let us edit 
just the words and have it cut the that would yeah. listen guys we're we're getting close on time here i'm having some technical difficulties my camera's not working and i'm going to have to reboot and you're, <laughs> no, you're, that's what happened oh, i wish you could see my face i yeah. just like finally kim <laughs> all right well I, you don't who needs me you got kim uh, except i've got i've got professor stephen quinn who has been here the entire show Oh, uh, right. he and I are going to wrap things up oh, and, and we could do this. We could do this again and again and again, guys. Um, I've sure. got this, I've got this auditorium and you know what it reminds me of Kim while you're there yeah. now that you can see everything. <laughs> it, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to freak you out. It, oh, I can't show you anything. My camera's not working. Yeah. It reminds me of the auditorium in, uh, uh, Antahira you Square. You see. Uh, when I spoke uh, at AUC, I'm gonna when I get yes. when I get this up, um, I'm gonna remind people because that's the Cairo connection. I've been, I've taught in your classroom, and I really enjoyed working yes. with you and your students and uh, being a distinguished visiting professor. So that's that was great. a lot of fun. All right, Neil, right, thank you so much. Kim, thank you so thank much. You we're out of time. Great. Yeah, I've got to reboot and see if I can get things back on air for the next uh, Plan B. Terrific. Okay, Thanks, so everybody, thank for, for joining us. Thanks, Rob. Nice job. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.